If you Google data engineering roadmap for 2020 or 2021, you will probably likely find this picture. And you will immediately notice that there are a myriad of skills that supposedly are required for people who want to become a data engineer. Everything from learning about batch ETLs versus streaming, learning about DevOps, as well as APIs. And they even have some machine learning at the very bottom of this picture, which at the end of the day, there's probably over a decade worth of learning in this one image. And if you're looking for a clear data engineering roadmap for how to go from nothing to something in terms of your skill set, this is overwhelming. There are way too many things. And honestly, you're just going to drown if you try to learn all of these things at once. Now, just for a little comic relief, I also happened to Google data engineering tools just to kind of show you even more so how many things there are to quote unquote learn in the data engineering space. And this is the picture I came up with. Yes, I'm aware you can't read that. I can't read that. And this kind of further encapsulates the problem in tech as well as data engineering that there are just too many skills and tools for you to learn in a short period of time. I think many people are probably hoping they can learn data engineering in a year or two, but there are just so many skills. I'm still learning so much more in the data engineering space. There are projects I haven't had to take on, uh, skills and tools that I haven't had to work with, but that's kind of how technology goes. But if you're looking to break into data engineering, and if you're looking for a clear data engineering roadmap, this video will cover that, as well as provide a link below with a clear outline for all of the different steps that are outlined in this picture that we will go over here in a second in terms of links and different sources that you can use that range from free to some sort of paid course that you again can follow as your roadmap as you try to learn data engineering. So we're going to go over this roadmap and I'll kind of tell you why I picked each kind of step as well as the different resources, just because there's just so much out there that you can learn again from NoSQL databases to data warehouses to cloud data warehouses. It's overwhelming and this should just help you create a step-by-step -step plan that will probably take you a good amount of time to learn in terms of as you process and go through all of this it will probably take you well over a year to learn all of this and and learn all of this from a very high level honestly some people go into some of these specific topics in depth and become specialists at something like streaming or cloud data warehousing rather than being broad and understanding the entire data pipeline so this essentially will give you a very good grasp of the broad skills and make you ready to hopefully interview as you're going through your data career and trying to become a data engineer. All right, so starting on the left, we have coding basics. And if you watch my video on data engineering skill sets, I've kind of included these as well. And this is your baseline in terms of learning tech skills. You're not going to get around learning programming, Linux, as well as SQL. You need to have some sort of base of operation systems, as well as understanding how to code, because for now, we still program a lot as data engineers, so you're not going to get around that, especially once you start getting into bigger systems where you need to maybe code more heavily than in maybe some more drag and drop code environments. Also with that, I recommend learning things like SFTP and some things about firewalls and just how these various servers kind of interact with each other. Um, because as you're pulling from data and as you're having to learn how to pull from something like an SFTP or even just different systems, you'll have issues where you run into things like proxy issues or uh, whitelisting, and you just need to understand how to solve these problems. They're generally not always that complex, but if you don't even understand what you're dealing with, uh, you're going to spend a lot of time just Googling why you can't actually connect to some of your data sources. Now, once you have this very solid base in programming, SQL, and you know some form of operating system. So next, once you have this solid foundation in these various technologies, you can now build your first project. I recommend you probably do this kind of at the same time in terms of it will teach you how to utilize a lot of these different skills all in one. So in this example, I recommended you build a Flask API um, just because it's something super simple in terms of how you can actually set it up. And you'll be working with APIs anyways a lot as you're working as a data engineer because that's how you essentially often pull data from different data sources. So it's great to have a general idea of how APIs work. And a great way to learn that is by actually building your own and figuring out, oh, this is how you create different endpoints. This is how you have to deal with routing, various kind of challenges you'll run into. And you'll also have a pretty fun project at the end where you can either connect it to a website or just run some basic curl statements against it. And again, I'll connect some links below where you can find some uh, free resources or paid resources where you can learn how to do some of these things very quickly. So you're not having to spend a ton of time Googling, you know, Flask API and finding the right tutorial. Um, again, it'll be below in a link. So don't worry too much about the specifics on where you're going to find this information. Um, we're just going to keep going here. So this next part for part three is kind of where you're going to start differentiating yourself. So if you focus more on the analytical standpoint of like things like Python, then you start pushing into that data science realm. If you focus more heavily on backend programming, then you might 
become more of a CS major, then you might become more of a programmer. But if you focus more on data warehousing and data pipelines, that's where you start becoming more of a data engineer. Now here I recommend three resources. Uh, the first is uh, Kimball's data warehousing guide. Uh, it's just a great overall understanding of where data warehouses are coming from in terms of what we used to design in the past and kind of why we designed it different ways. You know, what are bridge tables? What are fact tables? What are all these different concepts that are very important for you to understand, especially as you're working in various companies, because not all companies are utilizing modern cloud data warehouses, which means they're probably still building classic data warehouses, which is fine. You need to just understand why we design them the way we do. So that book will be a depth of knowledge for you. Take some time, read it, you know, and really understand the various tables and structures. From there, I recommend you take the basic data warehousing course on Udemy. It really covers a lot of the same stuff you'll learn in Kimball's book, but I think you'll learn to kind of start applying it a little more. So it's not as kind of isolated as a book can be, right? Like you're adding this next layer where you're kind of having this interactive component. Um, so that's why I recommend that course. And then finally, read Is Data Engineering for You, which will be linked below, because it will ask you the question that you need to answer, which is, do you even want to be a data engineer? Or are you doing this because you read an article? So uh, hopefully this article kind of gives you some insight on what data engineers do and will help provide a lot of new information that you might not know yet. Okay, from there, you can see that I've got a second project, which is now that you understand programming and now that you understand data warehousing, ETLs, data pipelines, you should start applying that knowledge. And I'd recommend you actually try to build something where you scrape some sort of online source you can use something like data.gov. They've got lots of JSON and CSV files that are really easy to pull. And from there, you can store it into some sort of SFTP. And if you want to do a little extra credit, you can try encrypting it with something like PGP, store it into some sort of SFTP that you've set up, create some sort of basic dimensional model, and then pull that data and load that data into a data warehouse of some kind. You don't have to worry too much about workflows and automations and dealing with dependencies at this point. I would focus more on modeling, pulling the data, learning how to kind of just automate code because you'll run into problems like dependency management and all all these things slowly and you'll have to learn how to deal with them and that will kind of give you the second project where you've learned how to again scrape data store it create this dimensional model and actually store it as a data product essentially and i'm pointing that part out because i've recently been working with someone who i asked to do some work and when i looked at it i realized they did it more like a data scientist and not a data engineer which was more focused on ad hoc versus developing some sort of like database or a data warehouse. And that's something that's very important to understand. Data scientists will often do some similar work here where they're scraping stuff from online, but they're often only doing it for the moment. And so they're just creating like something to scrape into data frames and then push out and there's no real final product. There's nothing tangible. So that's uh, important to point out that as you're building a second project, you need to focus on not just scraping the data, but storing it. Think about the fact that someone else in the future might actually want to use that data, uh, not just you for your project. So that's a very big differentiation between data scientists and data engineers. Data engineers build data infrastructure that actually will be used in the future, where I often notice that data scientists kind of will do some quick ad hoc analysis, but that's usually not stored or saved for some future purpose. It's just done with some sort of uh, data frames or some queries, and it's very ad hoc, and then they're done with it and they're on to their next analysis because that's their focus, right? Like their focus and their output is analysis. Our focus is more heavily on data and producing tables that can be used in the future by other analysts and data scientists. And you'll also notice that I have an upper and a lower set of arrows where I've got two things that I think you should do continuously throughout this roadmap. One, you should learn about things like CICD, um, Git, uh, logging and monitoring tools, debugging, and this will all kind of come with time as you're building out these projects. You'll learn how to actually save your code and how to work with it and how to deploy it, but that's kind of step-by-step -step throughout your process. Don't worry again about rushing it, just kind of take one little piece of it at a, t at a time and you'll learn how to actually deploy it. While at the same time, spend some time documenting your work, write a blog, put together a GitHub portfolio, do all of this stuff because all this work is worth pointing out in the future when you go for interviews. So kind of be doing this along the way, like write an article about data modeling after you've finished reading about it and kind of digesting it, just so you further kind of digest and take in that information. It's a great way to learn, you know, by creating content and you can then kind of show people, hey, I just learned this. Here's what I learned. And overall, it's, again, it's good for you. It's good to show other people that you're interested in this topic. And as you're trying to go for interviews, it just gets you, I think, more ready. Hey, could you take a moment and just do me a quick favor and just hit that like button and 
smash subscribe if you haven't already. It really does mean a lot to me. You know, this channel is growing very rapidly at this point. We're at 5,000 plus subscribers. We were at 2,000 subscribers in March. I'm ecstatic. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you like data engineering or data science, we're going to keep diving into that on this channel. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate all your likes, subscriptions, and comments. And if you have any questions about data engineering, please post them below. And now back to your normal programming. Next, you'll notice I have two step fives because these aren't necessarily the same, but I think you'll have to kind of learn them at some similar time because you'll likely be testing a lot of your data pipelines and you'll need to set up some form of testing system. This can be by learning about things like unit tests and integration tests. And there's a great course, uh, again, on Unity where you can go over Python uh, unit tests and uh, test driven development, which will help you understand how to not just write code and then write tests for it, but also learn how to think about the tests you're going to write prior to writing your code and how to actually implement it into your overall CI CD system so you can actually make sure you're running it as you're integrating new code into your overall system rather than having to manually test your code constantly and at the same time learn about some of the workflow tools like Airflow or Luigi set that up with like something like Docker just because then you're also again integrating some other new tool in there you're learning how to set up Airflow while working with Docker and learning how to do test driven development um, again you're really trying to layer this knowledge together that's why I put this five here because I want you to layer this together, I think there's a good chance of actually getting that synergy between these topics because you'll be just doing a lot of work that's going to require testing when you're doing these workflow um, automation pipelines. And overall, it will both condense as well as contextualize this learning much better, in my opinion. Okay, from here, it kind of gets a little harder. And although I have put numbers six, seven, eight, nine, etc., it really does get a lot harder here because you could really learn a lot of the skills at the same time, like 10 I put uh, for UI UX. You could probably also learn that where I put six. I just don't think it's necessarily that important to learn till later on, till you're actually working at a company as a data engineer. Because until you actually work at a company, you're not likely to get interviewed about how to design a dashboard. And so this first portion is really focused on trying to get you that job. And then once you get that job, I think it makes more sense to learn things like dashboarding and Tableau. But again, you could kind of learn that any point throughout this process and because it's also a great way to display your work. But I would stick with the fact that learning about cloud and NoSQL databases is very important and should be a early next step because at the end of the day, most data warehouses or a lot of data warehouses are going into the cloud. So you need to understand how to work with that. You need to understand the nuances between cloud data warehouses versus normal data warehouses. Also, you need to learn about NoSQL and why it's different and how you have to interact with those systems and how you can work with those systems and the benefits. And for that, there's actually a great free code camp course. Um, you can just look up database systems, which the name is right there in the picture, but again, link below, as well as get some sort of cloud data certificate. Because at this point, you've got enough context and background to actually get one of those certificates. I wouldn't say get one of these early on. In my recent video about GCP, I talked kind of about this um, while I review the certificate for data engineers, just because these certificates are often very focused on one stack and that can be very limiting. So it's great to learn later on. And I think this is a great point to learn it at. Uh, from there, you can start learning more about streaming and distributed systems. Again, you don't have to learn about this stuff right away. These are often more complex versions of ways you can store data. And you should really learn and understand basic databases first before you go rushing into more complex concepts. Does streaming provide value? Yes. Will it maybe get you the job? That's kind of hit or miss depending on the company you go for. Um, if the company you go for is mostly working with things like SSAS, not really streaming that much, you might need more of these basic concepts to ensure the fact that you actually get through the interview. You can learn a lot of this other stuff when you actually have to apply it. So that's why I focus again, a lot of the stuff first on learning what you need to get to the interview and not focusing heavily on stuff that you can learn kind of afterwards. That being said, some companies will ask you questions about streaming as well as about distributed systems. So that's why I put it before studying for your interview. But there are plenty of courses there as well in terms of learning various streaming and distributed system courses. Uh, for example, Frank Kane has tons of them. He's definitely a great option in terms of course developers on Udemy. So uh, again, check out one or two of his courses just to look at it. Also, if you just want to kind of get a very quick understanding, check out Andreas how to install Kafka in three minutes. It's just a great way to get very high level how to work with Kafka very quickly. And it's kind of fun. So at this point, you're probably a year into this map and you should probably start taking some time to actually interview at companies. So spend some time at this point uh, studying. Hopefully you've learned a little bit of data structures and algorithms, just enough to at least pass the interviews and also be effective in terms of writing code. You know, don't use an array for everything if that's not what's best. Also be ready for SQL questions because a lot of data engineering interviews will have SQL questions and just practice them at home or go look for some course online. There's tons of uh, Udemy courses as well as 
subscription services where you can practice interviews. I used to just honestly write my own questions. Like I would sit there and think, what kind of questions do I think they would ask me? And I would write them out and then try to write the query against it. And I picked that up from a friend because that's how he used to study for his computer science courses. He would actually literally try to guess what the professor would write as questions and then try to answer them himself. So that basically forces you to think about what questions could be written and then forces you to answer them. And it's kind of a fun way to really challenge yourself both to think about the problem as well as the solution. All right, so for this third project, you're probably gonna be doing it the same time as you're studying for your interviews. You know, you're gonna to want to talk about something uh, with your interviewers and recruiters. So you can kind of start building this project that you can talk through and show off to uh, different recruiters. So that's why I kind of put it as step nine. And this can kind of try to be a very holistic project where you're literally creating some sort of cloud managed service. You know, you're spinning up something on AWS, some sort of EC2 instance, setting up an ETL tool, um, scraping some data, pushing it to BigQuery, whatever it might be. Take some time to actually build that third project, have fun with it, you know, try finding some fun data sources to pull. And then again, document it, write about it. And I think that will be very exciting for you. And then for 10, again, I kind of put UI, UX and dashboarding at the end. Should you know this? Yes, at some point. Again, it could be kind of learned throughout this whole process, but I don't think it's necessary to often get the job. You might want to have some Tableau or Power BI on your resume, but actually during the interview, you're not likely to get asked a question about how to design a dashboard. At least not often. I can only think of one time I was asked to draw a chart and not even a dashboard. So it's just important to know that that's not really important to understand until you're finally actually working. Now, honestly, at this point, you've probably learned a ton of stuff and you can now go backwards and spend some time to go in depth in maybe a subject that you really enjoyed. Maybe you really enjoyed streaming. Maybe you really enjoyed cloud data warehouses. Go spend some more time really learning about those skills. I've honestly been spending a lot more time recently in data modeling again, as I'm trying to build this data warehouse project because I want to make sure it's as accurate as possible. And it's pretty funny in terms of like, you come up to these very, what would feel like simplistic concepts, but you realize, oh wait, if I store it this way, then I can't look back historically. Uh, how do other people store it? Wow, there are people who like fight about this one issue. Like I've been looking at like address information and there are so many different ways that people are storing address information for things like customers and employers that it's interesting in terms of like the various things you're trying to get in your data model and the different trade-offs. So you really could spend a ton of time in any of these subjects. Maybe you want to do some ML and understand ML pipelines. Go do that. Go spend some time and have fun at this point. Now that you've gotten this solid base again, throughout your career, you're going to be rebuilding and building up higher these various skill sets. So most of this is just to get you that interview and that first job and not focus on making you the perfect data engineer. Because again, there's a lot of stuff here and you're not going to master all of it. You're just going to be ready for that interview. Anyways, guys, that is my data engineering roadmap. As you can tell, there's a lot of stuff on here. Don't feel overwhelmed. Pick one place to start and just go at it and learn and enjoy the process. Again, you're learning this for the first time and it's honestly a lot of fun because you're never going to be at that step again. Honestly, some part of me almost wishes I could have that excitement again of writing your first hello world program. It's honestly super exciting and I will never have that again. So enjoy it. Enjoy those moments where you're just learning how to code and you're just learning how to get things running. You know, the first time I had an API that was working, it was super exciting. It was like, wow, I just built my own API. This is really cool. Um, now it's just something I do. So enjoy those like firsts. Don't rush through them. And again, document them. Uh, if you have blogs, share them below. I'd love to see and uh, maybe even comment on them. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.